Hello builders, John Marquis here, your builder CPA. And today we are going to make a manual whip calculation. Why do I call it a manual whip calculation? Well, that's because there are some new software tools such as JobTread that will do most of this automatically, but some people don't necessarily want to use a job software. So I'm going to show you the old fashioned way of doing it. So here I am on mybuildercpa.com, which is our website. And if you'd like to get this template, you can just head on over to the freebies section and scroll down to the work in process template, fill out the form, and it will give you access to the template over here. And when you first get access, you're gonna go ahead and go to file and make a copy and it should let you save the copy in your own personal Google Drive or you could even download it if you would prefer using it in Excel. So now that I have the copy of the WIP schedule, the first tab is just a few instructions. I always reserve the right to expand these or change these at any point. So if you're watching this now and there's more items here, hopefully the additional items I add will help you. On the second tab, we have the WIP schedule. And I do need to mention, so you can prepare the WIP schedule for your information, which is great. I highly recommend doing this at the end of every month after you have closed and reconciled all of your books. Or you can also use the WIP calculation to actually populate a journal in your QuickBooks file that will post entries that show you what your true profit is for the prior period and it will also show you what your over and under billings are on your balance sheet. I do have to caution you, if you start this process in QuickBooks, you basically can never stop. So at the end of every month, you will post your over under journal entry, and on the first day of the following month, you will reverse it. And once you start that process, you're always going to have a positive and a negative in all of your accounts. So you're gonna to want to continue this process indefinitely. So if you are looking to make this entry in QuickBooks, I would recommend working with a qualified bookkeeper or accountant who's familiar with this process so that they can manage it for you. It's just one more thing that you don't need to worry about. So here's the template. We're gonna start by listing the job IDs, so we will use two jobs. We have 123 Main Street and 456 Oak Street. And then I'm just going to delete all of the columns below here. And everything that is in a light blue cell is a calculation. So that's going to update automatically for you. And you should only have to update what's in the white cells. So this one will put it's a renovation and this one will put new construction. And we'll say for this one, the original contract is 2 million and the new construction is 3 million. And we're gonna assume the original estimated cost was 1.25 million. And this one for the new construction, we'll put two million for the cost. So here we can see our original profit margin. Um, it's going to apply these original profit margins to the rest of our calculation. So then we have a place to enter change orders. So just a side note, always make sure change orders get signed before you start. We'll assume that we have 200,000 in change orders here and we have 100,000 here. Then we're gonna assume that since change orders are such a pain, we're gonna mark them up quite a bit. So we're gonna do 50,000 for the cost of that change order and 25,000 for this one. Then it gives us our revised contract price, our revised estimated cost, and then it gives us any current overages. And you can probably just leave this one blank. But if you do know a part of your budget that you've gone over, 
you could add it here. Um, then we have our revised profit margin here. Thanks to those change orders, it's gone up. So here we're gonna drop in our actual costs to date. So for this one, we'll say 750,000 and this one is 650,000. So this would be, this is why it's important for us to close and reconcile the books before we start this because if things are not reconciled, you might have things lingering in the bank feed and your costs might be higher than you anticipate. So the next column is a spot where you can drop in the actual percentage complete. So this would be from someone who's out on site and has eyes on the job to know what it is actually. But if for whatever reason, you're not able to get out to the job site, just use the amount that's calculated and that's probably gonna be your best bet. So already um, we have some numbers starting to populate, but we haven't entered any of our build to date numbers. So if you have uh, billed the homeowner, you know, say for example, you've done draw schedule payments that amount to a million, um, it will calculate that you've, oh, you've underbilled here because it's a negative amount and then say, for example, this one, we have billed 800,000. We have overbilled 20,000. So now that the spreadsheet has finished calculating, it's telling us the amount of profit that we've earned here is 435,000 on 123 Main Street and 130,000 on 456 Oak Street. So now this tells us if we total these two numbers, I'm not sure if you can see this down in the bottom. So we are currently underbilled by 140,000. So be that what it is, um, now you know that you've got at least 140,000 that you should be able to calculate relatively soon, just as soon as you can get another invoice out to these two jobs. So um, in my next video, I will do a tutorial on how we can actually post this in QuickBooks. So if you're interested, tune into that video. Otherwise, have a great day.